tomorrow, a two-day session of the Global Economic Impact Forum on Ukraine begins in Istanbul, Turkey. Newfoundland Senator David Wells will deliver a keynote speech by video. Right now, he joins us by phone. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, Martin. So the timing here might seem a bit curious to some of us. Why is it important to hold this conference now when there seems to be no end in sight to this war? Well, you're right. There, there, there does seem to be no end in sight, and and Russia continues to 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 put on their uh, their aggressive show. Um, it's it's never too late to start the plan to rebuild, and Ukraine uh, is uh, is in that mode now. They know they've got infrastructure issues. They know they've got uh, issues with um, people who have, refugees who have fled. Uh, that you know, may, most of them want to come back. So these are the issues that they uh, that they want to deal with uh, in in their preparatory phase, which is uh, which is really what this uh, uh, this forum is all about. Uh, Senator Wills, tell us more about who will be there and and what the goals are here. Sure. Well, the goal is to is 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 really an, an initial stage plan uh, to to rebuild the economy, uh, to rebuild infrastructure in this more than just more than just the the obvious infrastructure of you know bridges and ports and rails and roads, uh, but there's infrastructure for uh, for businesses to survive and thrive. Uh, and so that that sort of the, the infrastructure that that you know banks, uh, you know monetary policy, uh, loans and grants that that sort of infrastructure, and also the infrastructure for when people return. So of course uh, Russia has taken over much of the eastern Ukraine, and uh, and so when people return, you know they they in all likelihood won't want to go back to that part. So they will have to be housed elsewhere, and they will have to have jobs elsewhere. Um, and you know that that's 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 part of it. You asked about who else would be uh, attending. There'll be you know presidents and vice presidents. There'll be ministers from uh, a number of countries. Um, uh, I know from from Ukraine, there's the, uh, they've got some ministers, mostly economic portfolios, infrastructure and development, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a U.S. senator attending, uh, and uh, you know alongside uh, alongside me, and then a lot of chambers of commerce and and industry associations. And of course, businesses want to get involved in any rebuilding effort. There's obviously business opportunities, and, uh, and you know that, that's uh, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. There'll, you know, obviously, many more. I think more than a thousand attendees, right. uh, and uh, yeah. So it's a, it'll it'll be a it'll be a full two day conference. You're going to be a keynote speaker at that conference. Talk about your involvement and how you became involved with it. Well. So I've had uh, I've done um, uh, speeches and presentations for the International Crypt Trade Council, based in Washington D.C. Uh, while the sponsor of the of the conference is the government of Ukraine, uh, they have tasked the International Trade Council to organize it because I've had a, a, a relationship with them in the past, speaking at conferences and giving presentations. Uh, they asked me if I would uh, if I would keynote this, and they know my background in uh, in the oil and gas industry and resource development. Um, and, of, and of course, my, my position as a, as, a, as, a, as a senator. Can you give us a sense of what your message will be uh, in this uh, conference? You know, I'm going to try to deliver a message of hope. Um, I'm going to talk uh, extensively about uh, the need for the infrastructure, which I which I just spoke about. Uh, that's the thing that's probably the most damaged, not just, as I said, the physical infrastructure, but the human infrastructure. And if you want businesses to to, to return, to start or restart, uh, you want investors from outside um, to uh, to to do the work. Um, uh, you know, I'll, t- I'll talk about what's necessary to uh, to tee that up. Is there a sense already here of what levels of infrastructure need to be addressed first? You mentioned several levels there. Um, has a plan been developed to that extent yet? Uh, it's so the Ukraine government has a has a has a program which is essentially based on infrastructure development called U twenty four. Uh, so I'll build on that. But, you know, they recognize that it's more than just, you know, bridges, rails and roads and ports. There's also the protection of those um, and, uh, and and obviously the timing of the end of the war. Uh, but still, the preparations have to happen before then. And they want their people to return. They want their people to return in a safe environment. And that may be in cities that they uh, that they hadn't lived in before. So there's there's that as well. For most of us across the globe, we're just watching the images on the evening news or or online through our through our devices. Uh, from your assessment, uh, what is the damage so far, and what needs to be rebuilt first? 
You know, I mean, the, the systems that allow a country to operate, so the health systems, you know, you know there's obviously going to be a need for more orphanages, uh, you know, f- foster care, uh, families trying to reunite. There's there's so much. And when people think of rebuilding Ukraine, you know, we, we think about, you know, we think about the, you know, the devastating losses that we see on, on the, on the evening news, um, every day. But, you know, there, there is more to it than that. There are the, the economic systems that allow a country, uh, to, you know, to operate as a, well, certainly in our case, as a Western democracy, which is what Ukraine wants to, uh, continue to be. Uh, your comment there kind of stopped me in my tracks a little bit. I'm sure it did for many listeners too. The need for more orphanages and foster care as a starting point here. I mean, that is a sobering comment. Uh, you know what? It's it's one of the devastating effects of war, and it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's it is sobering, um, uh, and and but it's necessary. It's sadly necessary. Um, you know, churches, hospitals, housing. Uh, you know, the, the administrative offices that help things, um, that help things move along. Uh, all of that has to be in many, in many areas rebuilt. I think we'd be hard pressed to find somebody who, who would disagree that a rebuilding obviously needs to happen in, in Ukraine. But there are critics that say that there is a strange balance happening here. One between this conference identifying need in Ukraine versus identifying business opportunities. How do you respond to that? Well, the needs are obvious. Um, And when, you know, if governments are going to foot the bill, uh, someone still has to do the work. And that could be Ukrainian companies, the ones that are left. And they're, they're, uh, many of them have been disbanded and devastated themselves. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, the business opportunities, someone has to do the work. Someone has to go in and rebuild roads. Uh, rebuild bridges, rebuild railways, rebuild ports, and protect those. Uh, you know, so it can't it can't all just be done by by government. Um, you know, there's you know the systems in place that help rebuild. And you'll you'll recall uh, from our from our history books the the Marshall Plan after the Second World War. Uh, while it was governments that funded it, it was businesses that uh, that uh, that executed the rebuilding plan. What role will Canadian companies and Canadian investment play in the rebuilding in Ukraine? Um, well, I, I hope uh, I hope a, v- a very good role, and, and already we've been involved in discussions around food and fuel, uh, something that I've spoken with the World Trade Council, International Trade Council, um, before. Um, obviously, we're going to increase our oil and gas production because uh, it's one thing to say, "Oh, uh, Germany and, and other countries of Europe should not buy Russian uh, should not buy Russian gas when there's really not the supply to replace it." So, you know, I'm a big promoter, obviously, of Newfoundland land oil and gas industry, uh, Canadian oil and gas industry. So, you know, that's one of the roles. Um, Ukraine is a massive producer of grains, not just for their own consumption, but for export. Canada has a role to fill there as well. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're a, a, a very large grain, uh, seed, seeds and seed oil producer. So, you know, there are, there are opportunities for supply. And again, not just for supply to Ukraine, but for countries that will be in need of what Ukraine would have normally supplied. So, and of course, there's infrastructure, the classic infrastructure development that, uh, that we're all familiar with. And I hope Canadian companies are involved. I know the Canadian Ukraine uh, Chamber of Commerce is heavily involved in the, in, in the discussions with the Ukrainian government and other, other uh, funding suppliers around the world to have Ukrainian uh, Canadian companies be involved and Canadian companies. Senator Wells, before we say our goodbyes here, um, you're also a Canadian delegate to meetings of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. I'm curious to know what insights you can share about expectations for the future of Russia's involvement in Ukraine. Well, thanks for asking. We did have uh, we did have OSCE meetings in the UK last week that I attended, along with a number of a number of other Canadian uh, delegates. Um, you know, Russia has boxed themselves in box themselves into pariah status in the world and particularly in Europe. There were a lot of discussions about about that. Of course, Ukraine is being is more than being threatened. Ukraine is being attacked now, but other countries in that sphere are being threatened. 
Uh, and so that's a, that's a, not just a concern of those countries, but it's a concern of Europe and the world. So these are the kind of things that, uh, that we discussed. And, you know, we all know the, the, the role of NATO in protecting, uh, in protecting the partners within NATO under Article 5. Uh, in which, you know, where one is attacked, uh, it's, it's deemed as all are attacked. So these are the kind of things that we talked about. And of course, not everyone's a, a member of NATO, but, uh, everyone seeks the protection of the global community. And that's, uh, that's, that's a, a big part of what's happening now. Senator Wells, I really appreciate your time this evening. Thank you so much. I appreciate your insights here too. You're very welcome, Martin. Newfoundland Senator David Wells is a keynote speaker, a co-keynote speaker at the Global Economic Impact Forum. It begins tomorrow in Istanbul, Turkey.